Happy Easter, everyone. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Welcome to our Easter celebration here at Worcester Park Baptist Church. If you're joining us for the first time, especially if you've taken part in our online Alpha course, welcome to you. A warm welcome to our regular viewers too. And now, a reading from the Gospel of Luke in the Bible. On the first day of the week, very early in the morning, the women took the spices they had prepared and went to the tomb. They found the stone rolled away from the tomb. But when they entered, they did not find the body of the Lord Jesus. While they were wondering about this, suddenly two men in clothes that gleamed like lightning stood beside them. In their fright, the women bowed down with their faces to the ground. But the men said to them, Why do you look for the living among the dead? He is not here. He has risen. There will be a few announcements later on, but let's continue now by singing two great Easter songs of celebration.
If you are just joining us, welcome. Our service today is being recorded in the boarding room, which has been used for the last couple of days as a prayer room. It's been great to have people back in the church building following the recent lockdown. This Easter, as usual, we've placed a cross on the shrub garden at the end of the avenue, and it's dressed today with daffodils to mark the new life of Jesus' resurrection. So we encourage you and your family to um, walk uh, past the cross later on today and add your own flowers to share in this public act of worship and celebration. While our services are running online, we've not been able to take up an offering in the usual manner. So if you're interested in giving financially to the church, you can do this online or by contacting our treasurer, David. You can do both of these at our website, wpbc.org.uk. Let's give thanks for what God has given us and what we offer back now. Heavenly Father, on this Easter day, we come to thank you for your generosity toward us. You sent your son, Jesus Christ, to die for us, giving us the hope of eternal life. We offer you our thanks and praise. And as we give back to you through direct debits and online giving, we pray that these gifts would help the church proclaim your name in Worcester Park and beyond. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. In a moment, we're going to hear our old age talk from Karis. If you've not already caught up with her Messy Church Facebook Live from last Sunday, you can do so at facebook.com slash wpbaptist. And after Karis has spoken, we'll sing again, and then we'll hear from Fabio and Fernando, who attend the Brazilian church, which also meet on our premises. Good morning everyone and happy Easter. Now if you were able to join with us last weekend for our Messy Church Facebook Live then you will know that I shared with you the secret of my golden egg. This special golden egg contains the secret of Easter. Now if you were here then don't tell anyone else the secret, let's keep it to ourselves just for a little bit longer and see what uh, we're going to find out this morning because Easter is all about eggs, isn't it? I know there's a special story about Jesus as well, but we really love the eggs, don't we? And especially the chocolate variety. And I've been thinking this morning a bit more about eggs and why they have become so closely associated with Easter. And what I discovered was that traditionally, during the season of Lent, when people do a thing called fasting, where they cut out certain foods from their diet, mostly foods that are generally considered to be luxury, like sugar and butter and eggs, foods that your body don't actually need. And that's the reason why Pancake Day falls at the start of Lent, because everybody had to use up all the eggs and sugar and butter that they had in their home, so they wouldn't be tempted to eat them throughout Lent. But when Lent and fasting was finished and when everybody got to Easter day, it was okay to eat eggs again. So as a treat, children were given a hard-boiled egg to eat, maybe one that had been decorated with colours and patterns and pictures, a bit like the ones we saw last Sunday that Pastor Abraham and Maria were giving away to their Korean church congregation. So Easter became associated with eating eggs, but not just eating eggs, but also playing games with them. Now, lots of us like to go out Easter egg hunting, where we find eggs that are hidden maybe around the house or in the garden. And this custom originally comes from Germany. Some people suggest that it dates back to the late 16th century when the Protestant reformer Martin Luther organised egg hunts for his congregation. So the men in the church would go and hide the eggs for the women and children to find. And we know that Queen Victoria also enjoyed egg hunts that were put on for her by her German-born mother. So that's egg hunts, one game played with eggs. Another one is egg rolling. Some people hold egg rolling competitions where decorated hard boiled eggs are rolled down a hillside or a grassy bank to see which egg will go the furthest 
and which egg will survive with the least cracks or damage at the end. Another game you can play with eggs is egg tapping and this one is a little bit like conkers. So you use the pointed end of a hard boiled egg and you tap it against another one and you're trying to see how strong your egg is because the winner is the egg that has the least broken bits of shell at the end. And the game can become very serious with rules about how the eggs are boiled, which types and varieties of eggs can be used, and the winner must eat their egg at the end to prove that it was a real egg and not a false one. But what have all these games with eggs got to do with Easter and the secret of Easter in our golden egg? Well, I was thinking when we hunt for eggs, maybe we were reminded of the women who went to the tomb looking for Jesus after he had died and been buried. They'd come to anoint his body with spices, but when they got there, the great big stone in front of the tomb had been rolled away, just like the eggs are rolled down the hill. And all the women saw was the grave clothes and the angels telling them, he is not here. The reason for that was that Jesus had come back to life again. He had risen. And maybe that game of egg tapping reminds us of little chicks inside their eggs when they're ready to emerge into the world full of new life. So eggs are a wonderful reminder of the Easter story. And this egg contains the secret of Easter. So if you know already, shout it out with me. The secret of Easter is that the egg is empty. The tomb is empty. Jesus isn't there, he is alive. So this Easter, why don't you do some hunting for yourself? Why don't you have a look for Jesus? If you do, you will find out that the stone has been rolled away, the tomb is empty, and Jesus has new life to share with you today. Happy Easter. I'm gonna trust in God, I'm gonna trust in Jesus, without shame and without fear. I'm gonna fix my eyes on the hope of glory for his day. everyone we are here this morning with Fabio and Fernando who are the leaders of our Portuguese speaking congregation who meet uh, in our church normally when we're able to meet um, but they've been meeting online a bit like we have so we really wanted to give Fabio and Fernando a chance to say hi to us all and to share what they've been up to and also to talk a little bit about what's coming up over the next couple of weeks. So we'd love to ask you both, thank you for joining us this morning. It's great to thank see you. you. 
we'd love to ask you both, how would you normally be celebrating Easter in your church? And how are you going to be celebrating it this year with all the restrictions of the lockdown and the pandemic um, that are all around us this year? Yeah, I think this year will be different. So we will do online service. Uh, what we're usually going to do, uh, talk to everyone and ask them to stay with families. The Portuguese, they really like to uh, eating bacalhau. So eat a very nice bacalhau with your families. And we will um, uh, do a live service at six o'clock on Sunday. And then we ask them to watch and uh, celebrate uh, Easter with your, uh, their families. Um, usually our service, uh, I have been actually to Easter service in Oster Park Baptist Church, and our service is not different from uh, yours. Um, in Portugal and Brazil, we call uh, Pasqua. Yeah, different from English. They use two different terms, uh, Passover and Easter. So we use the term Pasqua. And uh, in Brazil, when we talk about Easter, we call it a Sunday of Resurrection, which is a very important word when we talk about Easter. Uh, we Presbyterians emphasize the resurrection, an empty cross, uh, and that Christ is not continually dying, but died once and is alive for all eternity. Christ's resurrection um, from the dead was the most important, the most glorious event in history, and it must be remembered. That's why we celebrate. Usually we have a very, very simple service where we always try to make things simple and we do everything for Jesus, for his glory. Uh, what we usually do different on an Easter uh, service is the content of what's preached. Usually the sermon is normally about the Old Testament Easter, which points to Jesus' resurrection. Uh, we try to do the same with the kids. Uh, Daniela usually do some drawings about uh, Moses, how God uh, was passing over Egypt and freed his people. And then we come to Jesus' death and his glorious resurrection, which gives us um, salvation. Um, we, we, I always like to say that. We always like to do things in a very faithful way to scriptures. I think this is very important for us, being faithful to scriptures. Um, another thing on the Easter service uh, that we do is the communion. Uh, um, one thing I always like to explain as well, Easter is not only in April. We celebrate Easter every time when we eat the bread and drink the communion. We usually do the same as uh, Baptist Church once a month. Um, but um, uh, we also do on Easter services. First uh, Corinthians 11, uh, 26 says, For whenever you eat the, this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. And that's the reason why we celebrate, because he's alive and he will come back. Why? For me, why Easter, really? Easter is the belief of the resurrection, of course, of Jesus Christ. He, the, the life, the death, and the resurrection through him. God's great gift to humanity was through him. And this is why Easter is important for, for our life. Because Jesus, it proved that Jesus was what he claimed to be. He was in the flesh. And they came to the earth to save us. Hallelujah. This is why our Jesus. This is why we really stand well, uh, firm to the world without fear. That's a matter of what they say. You cannot say anything about Jesus. No, no. Always I proclaim uh, the, his name. Always I share the, the Bible. And the good thing we have got in our group, we have got the uh, church meeting, um, uh, house meetings, and we do our studies of the, the Bible. Our group is a small group. We have about six people in my group. And these six people, and uh, we already distribute more than 500 Bibles through the Tanto France, to uh, Portugal, in Madeira as well. This is our island, even here and uh, in the island as well. And uh, where the Portuguese uh, people they, they are. And I've got in the group and uh, a guy, and he became a Christian. And he's so uh, keen about. Uh, 
to read the Bible because when he received and all the time he said, can I read the, the, the passage but first? When he starts reading and tears in his eyes, he said, I never realized uh, Jesus was so good for us. I never read that. But the, he thought he was a Christian all his life as a Catholic born. Okay. But this is our mission. This is why we are here in the world. That's a matter about the virus, that's about, about anything. This is when we preach God with, is, is with us, Emmanuel. And this is everything. Uh, my son is working in the police force. And he said that I'm uh, scared about, uh, I could bring something to the house. And they can, you can catch something. I said, David, don't worry about me because I'm safe. What means safe? Anyone can catch. No, no, I'm talking about my life. My life, real life, is with Jesus. I'm prepared because he said, I'm the way, I'm the truth, I'm the life. He never said, I've, oh, the, I said, he never said, I'm a way. I said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. And everything life is with him. When you recognize that and you really ask God to get in your life, you understand what I'm saying. And this is our glory. Jesus with us. And we have got everything. Nothing much. No prosper in this life, but prosper in God's. In Jesus' name. He died for us in that cross. Hallelujah. He came again because he, he resurrected. He came to the world and he said to Thomas, because you look, you see me, you touch me, you believe it. And blessed ones, they now see me, but believe in me, through mm. me. And this is the glory. This is why I believe. This is why God reveals to my life. Mm. And this is why all the church, to be aware about that. Don't worry about the coronavirus. But because our body is just dust. We are the clay, is the potter. But our soul, this belongs to God. This is why he prepared the way. He said I will be in my house, in my dad's house, to prepare the place for all of you. And this is why we go one day. Why are you scared about that? We are pilgrims in this world, nothing else. Gloria and glory to the church. Keep firm, old church, because God is, is with us. Hmm. Amen. 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 Wonderful. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah. And going back to your question, we are nothing. We are nothing without Jesus. Easter means everything to us. Again, without Jesus, we are nothing. And with Jesus, we've got everything. There was a um, Puritan preacher, uh, Richard Baxter. He said once, if you preach Jesus to your people, you have preached them everything. And that's it. That's all about Jesus. Um, it's all about Jesus. Mm. So uh, this is what the meaning of Easter to us. It means everything. Mm. Oh, Fabio, Fernando, thank you so much for sharing with us today. Just learning a bit about your church practice and learning as well, should I say even more importantly for us, about your own heartfelt faith and what God means to you and what Christ has done for you. What a, a privilege it's been to speak to you both today. So I know that from Karis and myself, thank you for joining us in the interview today. And we wish God's blessing on, on your fellowship and on you and your families. And uh, looking forward to meeting up once we get past uh, this lockdown and out of this and we can enjoy seeing one another face to face. Uh, it's going to be a good time when we celebrate Christ together. So thank you very much for joining with thank us you. today. Thank, thank you, Paris. Thank, thank you, Gavin. God bless. Thank you. Let's come to God in prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you that you sent your one and only Son so that all who believe in him may have eternal life. Thank you that he became incarnate so that he could be among us. Thank you that he showed us your character and how much you love us. Jesus, we thank you for showing us the way. We thank you for saving us. We thank you for loving us, no matter what we have done or who we are. We thank you that you bring healing, forgiveness and life in all its fullness. We ask for your forgiveness 
when we have not listened to you, when we have not acknowledged you or have forgotten you. We ask that you will take centre stage in our lives again, that we would become more like you as we follow you. Lord, we thank you that you conquered death, that love wins, that you bring hope, that you bring everlasting life, Lord, we ask that our love for you may be renewed, that our hunger for you be rekindled, that our thirst for you may be felt again, so that we may drink from the water of life. In, In your, your precious name we, we pray. pray. Amen. Amen. We're now going to hear from the Bible before Gavin brings today's message. For God so loved the world, that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. In the beginning was the Word. And the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Through him all things were made. Without him nothing was made that has been made. In him was life, and that life was the light of all mankind. The Word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. We have seen his glory, the glory of the one and only Son, who came from the Father, full of grace and truth. At that time, Jesus came from Nazareth in Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. Just as Jesus was coming up out of the water, he saw heaven being torn open and the Spirit descending on him like a dove. And a voice came from heaven, You are my son, whom I love. With you, I am well pleased. The Spirit of the Lord is on me, because he has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim freedom for the prisoners, and recovery of sight for the blind, to set the oppressed free. Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. So the soldiers took charge of Jesus. Carrying his own cross, he went out to the place of the skull, which in Aramaic is called Golgotha. There, they crucified him, and with him two others, one on each side and Jesus in the middle. Later, knowing that everything had now been finished, and so that scripture would be fulfilled, Jesus said, I am thirsty. A jar of wine vinegar was there, so they soaked a sponge in it put the sponge on a stalk of the hyssop plant and lifted it to Jesus' lips. When he had received the drink, Jesus said, It is finished. With that, he bowed his head and gave up his spirit. He himself bore our sins in his body on the cross 
so that we might die to sins and live for righteousness. By his wounds you have been healed. Very early in the morning, the women took the spices they had prepared and went to the tomb. They found the stone rolled away from the tomb, but when they entered, they did not find the body of the Lord Jesus. While they were wondering about this, suddenly two men in clothes that gleamed like lightning stood beside them. Why do you look for the living among the dead? He is not here. He has risen. When he had led them out of the vicinity of Bethany, Jesus lifted up his hands and blessed them. While he was blessing them, he left them and was taken up into heaven. Then they worshipped him and returned to Jerusalem with great joy. It must be providential that we celebrate Jesus' resurrection as we enter into springtime. The move from darkness to light puts a spring in our step as the world around us begins to open up before us. Now this year, that sense of the world opening up around us has become even greater this year as we exit a long and dark lockdown that we've lived through. We read about the women that went to Jesus' grave at the opening of our service today. Now they would have begun that journey to Jesus' grave in darkness. For them, of course, their whole world would have been plunged into darkness as Jesus died. Even with a bright midday sun on them, Jesus' crucifixion and death would have brought them to dark despair. No doubt that sometimes we, like they, feel despair, possibly even in the glorious spring sun. But Easter reminds us that dark despair is never the final word, but there is hope now. There is hope for those women that approached the tomb of Jesus. And there is hope for us today, whatever situation, whatever circumstance that we are in. Uh, despair can feel as though it is ready to grow around us and swallow us up. But Easter, the resurrection, tells us that there is another story. As we've been listening to this series, the Bible series, and we've been thinking about the biblical narrative that provides another story, another way of seeing things. Secular life uh, is not the only story that we need to live by, but there is a great story within the Bible, a true story that is opening up and that is bringing us to life. And so we're here uh, with the Messiah and love that we began last week, and now we're looking at it again in light of the resurrection. When the women arrive at the tomb, they are suddenly met by two men in gleaming clothes. They are described as an angel of the Lord in Matthew's Gospel. The angelic presence assures us, therefore, that the news they have to bring is big. The body of Jesus is no longer there. So the women are wondering, where has the body gone? But the news the angels are about to bring is great news. Over 30 years prior to the event that we're witnessing here today, the angels heralded the birth of a special baby and now they proclaim this incredible occurrence. They say, why do you look for the living among the dead? 
He is not here. He has risen. All that had happened, the life, the death of the beloved, had been moving toward this point where the Son of God broke that dark, icy grip of death. Jesus had risen from death. Upon the cross, Jesus had died for sin and secured forgiveness. And now, in his resurrection, he demonstrates that sin's curse, death, has been defeated. Now the resurrection that Jesus experiences here and the angels testify to and the women witness to, the resurrection was not a novel idea to the contemporaries of Jesus. It was there in the scriptures a little opaque and scarce amongst the Old Testament writings. Nevertheless, it was there. Charis recently used these words from the Old Testament prophet Isaiah in chapter 26 and verse 3. You will keep in perfect peace those whose minds are steadfast because they trust you. Now if we continue to read on in that chapter, we come across this amazing verse at verse 19, where the prophet declares, But your dead will live, Lord. Their bodies will rise. Let those who dwell in the dust wake up and shout for joy. Your dew is like the dew of the morning. The earth will give birth to her dead. What wonderful words there, uh, nestled within the Old Testament prophet Isaiah. Commenting on th that particular chapter, that particular verse uh, of chapter 26, Jewish scholar Benjamin D. Sommer says, Rabbinic Judaism emphasizes the belief in the resurrection of all humanity. Indeed, this belief is highlighted in the second paragraph of the Amidah prayer, which is recited three times each day in traditional liturgy. Addressing God, the prayer says, Your loving kindness sustains the living. Your great mercies give life to the dead. Jesus' resurrection from the dead, wasn't God given a sideways glance or bowling a googly to humanity? It was there in the teachings of God's people all along and is still held to be true in rabbinic teaching. Even if many don't recognize what we have come to believe, that Jesus was the first to rise, the firstborn among many brothers and sisters. Therefore, we hold on to our hope in the life, death and resurrection because it makes sense of an unfinished world that we live in. I've conducted many funerals over my 20 years of ministry and something that has struck me is the unfinished nature of life. We are not only physical beings made of flesh and blood, but we're spiritual too, created for eternity, intended to transcend this mortality and enter into eternity with our Creator in prayer and meditation, we can touch this reality. In resurrection life, we will discover completion, perfection, a love that will sustain and last for eternity. Early in the book of Acts, when the disciples had to appoint 
a new apostle to fill Judas's place. Peter put it like this. Therefore, it is necessary to choose one of the men who has been with us the whole time the Lord Jesus was living among us. Beginning from John's baptism to the time when Jesus was taken from us. For one of these must become a witness with us of his resurrection. The Swiss reformer John Calvin comments, let us note that the resurrection is here named before other things as being the chief point of the gospel. If the cross provides forgiveness and redemption, the resurrection assures us of its effectiveness. Jesus rose because everything that he wanted to fulfill on the cross was fulfilled. And so he invites us now to put our faith and trust in him, to join with him, sharing in his life, his death and his resurrection too. So on this Easter Sunday, there is an invitation. Come and believe. Find faith, new life, and the spring of eternal life by putting your faith in Jesus Christ, God's Son, our Saviour. Amen. So we're going to gather around the Lord's table now. We invite you to come and join with us. Uh, if you have children with you in, in your house, please, uh, parents, it's up to you. You know your child. You know if they're uh, in a place in their life where they can join with you in taking bread and wine today. Uh, if for some reason you're you're, you're visiting us and, uh, and you don't feel comfortable taking bread and wine, please uh, don't worry about that. Just stay with us and uh, be conscious of God's presence as we're gathered around his team in his name. So grace and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Among the poor, among the proud, among the persecuted, among the privileged, Christ is coming to make all things new. In the private house, in the public place, in the wedding feast, in the judgment hall, Christ is coming to make all things new. With a gentle touch, with an angry word, with a clear conscience, with burning love, Christ is coming to make all things new that the kingdom may come, that the world may believe, that the powerful might stumble, that the hidden might be seen. Christ is coming to make all things new. Within us, without us, behind us, before us, in this place, in every place, for this time, for all time. Christ is coming to make all things new. Let us turn to prayer, remembering the death and resurrection of the one who is our life and our meaning. We come first to die to all that is loveless and death-dealing in our lives. Lord Jesus, you wept over the sins of your city, on our city, Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you heal the wounds of sin and division, jealousy and bitterness. On us, Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you bring pardon and peace to the sinner. Grant us peace. Lord, have mercy. So as those committed to the life of grace, we hear the story of the first Lord's Supper. Luke chapter 22, 
verses 14 to 20. When the hour came, Jesus and his apostles reclined at the table, and he said to them, I have eagerly desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer, for I tell you I will not eat it again until it finds fulfilment in the kingdom of God. After taking the cup, he gave thanks and said, Take this and divide it among you, for I tell you, I will not drink again from the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God comes. And he took bread, gave thanks, and broke it, and gave it to them, saying, This is my body, given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after the supper, he took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, which is poured out for you. So let's come and pray for the bread and wine. Before Jesus broke the bread, before he poured the wine, he gave thanks to you, Lord God, King of the universe, giver of every good thing, of food and drink, of companionship and love, of all that gives us strength and dignity. Like him, we bless you for your generosity. Breaking the bread, Jesus spoke about the destruction of his own body, the result of human cruelty, indifference and envy. Remembering his courage and integrity, his willingness to die for the grace he proclaimed. We bless you for our redemption, one at such cost. Sharing the bread, Jesus promises to be with us always. When we acknowledge and delight in his presence here now, we bless you for his spirit binding us together in a new and hope-filled humanity. Fill us again, Lord, and empower us to live together in the peace and truth of the gospel. Amen. Jesus said, this is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Drink this and remember that Christ's blood was shed for you and be thankful. Let us just be still for a moment before God in quiet vigil, remembering others that need our prayers and thoughts at this time. blessing to us. Go with us, Lord, so that we can love in all sincerity, loathing what is evil and clinging to what is good. We will be devoted to one another as brothers and sisters, honouring each other above ourselves. We will be joyful in hope, patient in affliction, faithful in prayer. We will share with God's people who are in need and practice hospitality. With your help, we will bless those who persecute us, blessing and not cursing. We will not repay evil for evil. We will not be overcome by evil, but by the power of your spirit, we will overcome evil with good. Go with us, good Lord and live in us the life of the Kingdom. Grace and peace to you from God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. 
We're going to continue in our worship now as we sing O to See the Dawn. Zoom coffee meeting which starts directly after this service finishes on YouTube. 
and the details of the Zoom meeting are appearing on screen now. So let's close by blessing one another. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and evermore. Amen. Amen.